Okay, in this video, you're gonna use those sharp edge brush scales to paint what are called volumetric forms. So on my screen, you'll see my setup. I've got square paper and some testing paper, water, and a couple brushes. And to the right of the screen, you'll see a few helpful examples. On the top, there's a diagram that shows a volum volumetric box with all the terms that we're gonna be using. And then on the bottom, we have our kind of real example, which we're gonna use this Amazon box. So what I'm gonna do is paint this Amazon box and I'm gonna use four different tones and four different colors to represent each one of those sides of that box. So I'm gonna start with the highlight. The highlight is on the left side of the form. So I'm gonna mix some of the brown with some yellow to create a light brown by using clean lines and the right shape. So the right shape for this highlight is kind of this parallelogram So there's my highlight. You know, the color's not exactly the same, but it doesn't really matter. What's important here is the value. The value being how light or dark you make each one of these sides of the form. The mid-tone, the mid-tone is, in this case, the top of the box. It's darker than the highlight, but it's not as dark as the core shadow. When you do the next adjacent side, meaning the side that's gonna to touch the one you just did. You wanna be really careful not to have those colors mixed together because you'll get, you could get a little bit of wet and wet, which you don't wanna be using for this particular example. Right, so just pretty much using the brown for this. And if it's not dark enough, you could add a little bit of purple or a little bit of black. In fact, I'm gonna do that. Although I can see the difference on my paper, it's not really showing up on the camera too well. So I just added a little bit of purple. And there we go. Core shadow. The core shadow is the side, it's always the side, away from the highlight or opposite the highlight. The light source is hitting the highlight and the core shadow is being blocked from the light. So now I'm using mostly purple, maybe a little too much, that's better. Okay, so I add a little water and a little bit more yellow to kind of lighten up that value because it was it was a bit darker than I wanted. Now I've got my highlight and I've got my midtone and my core shadow. And you will notice that these horizontal sides of the form are angled. And then all the vertical lines are perfectly straight up and down. So watch your angles when you do this. You can look at the examples on the screen to match up. Now, my proportion's a little bit off, okay, but I'm not super worried about that. It's more about the form itself, making it look 3D by using those right angles, the correct angles, I should say, and the tones. Now, the cast shadow is not a side of the box. It is nothing, actually. It's just blank space where the form, the box, is blocking the light. And so on the table or whatever surface the box is sitting on, you're going to get a cast shadow. And you can do the cast shadow with uh, some gray, and you can make gray by watering down your black paint. It, the um, cast shadow is going to start from this corner, this front corner of the box, and then it's going to go 
this way. I can fill all this in. Where do you end the cast shadow? And the answer is that it ends where the back corner of the box is. I can't see the back corner, but I can guess that the back corner is right about here. That's where the back corner of the box is. So that means my cast shadow is gonna come out from behind that side of the box over here, all right? Now, I don't know exactly if that's right, but I just kind of guessed. And if you can approximate, then you'll get it to look pretty good. Next up, we're gonna try cylinders. Cylinder, the one I'm using is Pringles can, the example that's in the top right hand corner is, shows the terms that we're talking about, although the angle is different. You can see it's much more tilted, whereas the Pringles can is more from the side. So we're going to paint from the side, so we're going to try to match the Pringles can. It's a simpler form to paint because you really only have one side that you are creating that round surface. But it's a little bit harder because you have to show the shading having a little bit of a bend to it. We're gonna use the wet and wet technique for this, a lighter color fading into a darker color. I'm using kind of an orangey red for the Pringles can, and I'm gonna paint the shape of the front of that can. And the front of that can has an arched top, and then it has two straight sides. And that has a rounded base, like that. Okay, and I wanna fill this in. And so this whole surface is now basically the color of the highlight. And I'm going to use purple. I'm going to water it down because it's really strong. This purple I'm using, super strong. I'm going to add a little red. And now while this is wet, remember wet and wet, with wet and wet, you fade one color into another while the paint is still wet. So now I'm going to create, this is the core shadow. And the core shadow on a cylinder often appears as a vertical column or band of shading because the cylinder doesn't have a corner the way the box does. So light bends around the curved surface of the can. There's a spot where the light cannot go past. And so that's the, the, called the core shadow. So if our light source is coming from the left, it hits the left side of the can and then it starts to bend around that curved surface and then it sort of stops and that's the, the core shadow but it's not a hard edge the way the box is usually you get a mid-tone on the opposite side of the core shadow over on the right over here <clears throat> highlight i've got my highlight now core shadow is in the middle on the pringles can the core shadow is a little bit further to the right but i think it's easier to show core shadow a little bit more closer to the middle just because then you have room to show your mid-tone. Cast shadow on the cylinder is, I think, a little bit easier than the box, but it does come with one challenging area that people often make a mistake on, and that is where the shadow actually starts. Where the core shadow hits the bottom of the form, that is where your cast shadow begins. So your cast shadow now starts to take this little journey to the right. And then just carefully fill in your edges, try not to mix your colors together. Same as with the box. Oh, I'm starting to get some, see this is what happens when, you, when it's not totally dry, you start to get some bleed. Same as with the box, the core shadow is going to stop, the top line of the core shadow is gonna stop when it gets to 
where the back edge of that container is. The red and the gray kind of touching together, so I'm going to just kind of soak that up and attempt to kind of fill this in a little bit, but I'm being careful as to not to have those, those two areas mixed together. Okay, so that is volumet volumetric forms, boxes and cylinders with watercolor, 